She looking for a man. Any single man in the house? Come on. Come on, baby. You know, I'm a first round draft pick, I do believe. Come on, baby. Come up here. Honey, I'm worth dying for. But oh, please don't say that because then I'd want to embalm him. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. And today we are here to discuss Married to Medicine season 10, episode 11. And before we get into it, the last few episodes of Married to Medicine have not been great. So this was a nice change that we actually got something. Because the way last week's episode, when I tell you I had no commentary for you guys, I said, I'm not even going to turn this camera on because I have nothing to say and I'm not going to waste my time or your time. But like I said, this episode did give us a little something and I have a lot to say, especially when it comes to Dr. Heavenly and that whole dynamic between her and Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone. But with all that being said, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. Now, you know how all these shows like to start off with these cute opening scenes. So we started off with Phaedra at home and she's with a party planner and her oldest son, Aiden, and they're planning his 13th birthday. And the party planner says, well, that's gonna cost you around 70,000. And Phaedra says, that's fine. I said, I know that's right. Now, while I don't care too much for Phaedra, I do think that she's a great mom. And I love the scene later on when Aiden gave that speech to her. That was really sweet. So I'm all for balling out. If you have it like that, if you got the coin, I see no issue. And now we see a short scene with Sweet Tea and Dr. Heavenly. And mind you, Sweet Tea is getting her gums contoured. And of course, Dr. Heavenly is doing them. Now, the way I was screaming, because Dr. Heavenly is so petty, when it came time to talk about payment, Dr. Heavenly is gonna say, oh, does she have to call up Dr. G for the money? And then she said, oh yeah, Quad has the cards. I was like, Dr. Heavenly, really? And honestly, Dr. Heavenly, you're lucky that Sweet Tea did not get up and walk out because I'll be damned if I'm paying you to get my gums contoured and I'm sure that's a good coin. And you wanna sit up here and bring up my husband's ex-wife talking about, oh yeah, she still has access to his money? That's an insult. Now a quick side note, the way y'all were not here for my little joke in the last recap, when I said Sweet T really thinks that she got a prize and she got a thousand there, you were like, oh no, Brooke, Dr. G has money, he's frugal, but he got millions. I said, okay, I stand corrected, but y'all were not here for that joke. <laughs> I have to say, I love our relationship because we have a good old time in the comments. Y'all be like, no, Brooke. <laughs> now, I don't have too much to say about this next scene with Toya and Eugene having another date night. I thought the date idea was so cute. Eugene and Toya are at a flower shop and they're making bouquets. And when I tell you I love flowers, so I was here for it. But I'm happy to hear that Toya and Eugene seem to be on the right track. You have Toya saying that when she went out with Dr. Simone the other day, she did take into account what Dr. Simone told her about being easier to please. Now listen, I'm all for Toya having her standards, having her requirements. I think it's just the way she says things. And I said this in the last recap, where it's not what she says, it's how she says it. I think if she would just be a bit more sweeter, it wouldn't come off as, oh, she's unhappy or she's miserable or always complaining. It's just that what she says gets lost in translation because it's her tone of voice. But I've said this before, I honestly feel like Toya and Eugene might have the healthiest marriage out of everybody on this cast. So now Toya brings up Dr. Heavenly's invitation to Damon's medical mixer that's coming up in a few days. And I think Eugene says that he can't go because he has to work. But Toya goes on to say that she's happy to be around the ladies. Now, of course, we know that she's low-key subbing quad since quad is gone. And I said, we get it. You don't like quad. You're happy that she's gone and out of this group. We understand. And I just finished watching Mariah's interview with Carlos King. 
And she made some really valid points that the formula has gotten stale and that they're also in dire need of a shakeup too. And I agree because it's the same storylines each season. It's just the same old format and it is getting a bit tired. Hence why this second half of this season is definitely wearing me thin because nothing much is happening. I feel like the first seven episodes were great and then after that, it just went down a cliff. But hopefully the rest of the season picks up because yeah, I agree that something has to be done and I don't think that them kicking Quad out has really made the show better, in my opinion. Listen, we can all agree to disagree. I'm not saying that Quad didn't have her stuff because we all do. But what I am saying is that since she's been gone, the episodes have felt a bit stale. But it's obvious that the women want to let us know every episode that they're glad that Quad is gone. Because it's the constant, oh, I feel like a weight has been lifted from the group. It feels like a dark cloud has been removed. I feel so good. I feel so much lighter. The group feels great. And it's like, we get it. You're happy that Quad is off. So it's the night of Dr. Damon's medical mixer. And Dr. Heavenly, I want to know, what were you thinking when you put that dress on? No. Uh -uh. Don't get me wrong. Dr. Heavenly has never been a fashion girl by any means, but that has to be one of the worst looks I have ever seen her in. Dr. Simone had me screaming. She said, now it's clear that Phaedra dressed her because that dress looks a mess. <laughs> 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 Heavenly, it's clear that I have to put you in my Giselle Bryant and Ashley Darby files when it comes to fashion. Because again, that dress, absolutely not. What happened to a sexy black dress and some stilettos? I felt like the outfit was just wrong on so many levels, especially since it's your husband's medical mixer. <laughs> so everybody's there and now we see Phaedra come through and Phaedra's talking about how there are all these fine and eligible brown and black men and how she likes it because she's an angel dipped in chocolate. <laughs> So you have Dr. Heavenly trying to set Phaedra up with some of the men there. And you have this older man talking about, oh, he wants to play on the drums. I said, sir, you haven't even gotten her number. You haven't even set a date. You haven't sent her flowers or a cash app or bought a gift. But now you want to talk all sexual, talk about, oh yeah, I want to play on those drums. Excuse me. <laughs> and sir, you're way too old to only be bringing dick and bubble gum to the table. So stop. I said, this man is a good 68, 70, and he's talking to Phaedra like, oh yeah, I wanna play on those drums. Even Phaedra said, no, thank you. <laughs> Did anybody catch Sweet Tea talking about, oh yeah, Phaedra needs an older man. I said, girl, just because you went 30 years older, stop trying to put that on everybody else. <laughs> So Dr. Damon gives a speech and is it just me or does Dr. Damon always seem like he's nervous? So now we see Dr. Heavenly take the mic and she calls Phaedra up to the stage. So she's like, Phaedra single, do we have any eligible bachelors? If you're single, come on up. So I think maybe like three or four men came up. You have a 32 year old. And I don't know, I felt like some of those men, I don't know if they have the money that Phaedra's looking for because they looked a bit nervous approaching her. I said, I don't know. I said, Phaedra, I don't think that the love of your life is in this group of men who came up. <laughs> While the mixer is still going on, we see Dr. Alicia, Dr. Simone, and Toya sitting on one of the couches and they're talking. So Dr. Simone starts asking Dr. Alicia, if her husband had more appreciation for her since she got back from Napa. So Dr. Alicia says, oh yeah, he sure did. I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but he definitely did appreciate me a lot more. So now Toya jumps in and she brings up what Dr. Alicia's husband said when he was out with the guys the other night. So we see the clip and he's going on about how American women are too independent 
And all the other men were like, excuse me, what? And Dr. Alicia says that that's been an ongoing conversation in their household. And now Toya jumps in and she says, well, it seems like your man is hard to take care of. Now, when Toya said that, I already knew that Dr. Alicia was going to be upset by it. And she was clearly pissed because she was like, oh, like you, like my husband and you are very similar because you're also difficult. I was like, ooh. And even Toya was caught off guard like, oh, okay, like, damn, we're going there. <laughs> Dr. Alicia was clearly hurt because she goes on to say in her confessional that unlike these other women, she actually respects her husband. Now I said, Dr. Alicia, let's stop for a minute because what, four episodes ago, you admitted to the ladies that you told your husband that he's not a man. Is that respect? I don't think it is. Also, Dr. Alicia, it's screaming out to me that you're a bit unhappy and insecure in your marriage. And you know that your husband, unfortunately, has a lot of twisted and chauvinistic views, especially when it comes to what a woman's role is and a man's role in the marriage. And I think that you're in denial that you don't like what your husband says either. And I wouldn't be surprised if you guys get into really heated arguments about that because you're very independent and he doesn't want you to be that independent. He wants you to be under his thumb. So I said, girl, don't get mad at Toya. Be mad at your man. And then for you to say, oh, well, I respect my husband. Well, do you? <laughs> because from what I've heard, it doesn't sound like you do. So here's where things get spicy. Dr. Simone changes the conversation and she says that her and Cecil are going to be hosting the next couple's trip. And she goes on to add that the trip is going to be in Hilton Head, South Carolina. So Dr. Jackie says, where? Dr. Heavenly says, excuse me, girl, what? Like, come again? Everybody knows that Curtis was caught cheating on Jackie in Hilton Head. So now Dr. Heavenly starts stirring the pot like she always does. And she's questioning Dr. Simone. She's like, so did you not think that that would be a trigger for Dr. Jackie? And now Simone is like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. That did not even cross my mind. Now let's just pause for a minute because I want to give Dr. Simone the benefit of the doubt. I want to assume and I want to hope that Dr. Simone would not be that messy to purposely plan a trip that would trigger her good friend. But here's my thing though. Dr. Simone, when Dr. Heavenly mentioned this, my first reaction would have been, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let's rebook the trip and we're gonna go somewhere else. That's what I would have done. I don't think that I would have said, well, the trip's already booked, hotel's already booked, and it is what it is. That would not have been my reaction. And yes, I know that they are filming a TV show, but despite all that, if I value our friendship, there are certain things that I'm just not going to do. So I would have told production, oh no, we are rebooking this trip to somewhere else. We're gonna go to Miami, we're gonna go to LA, go anywhere, but we're not going to Hilton Head. That's what I would have done. So Dr. Simone sort of lost me there saying, well, oh no, it's already booked and you know, we're gonna go anyway, because I wouldn't have done that. But Dr. Heavenly, let me get you together. And I'm gonna talk more about this later on, but it's clear that you really wanna drive a wedge between Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie, because the way you kept saying, you knew, you effing knew, Dr. Heavenly, just stop. Don't make a bad situation even worse. And it's clear that you want there to be friction because you're very envious of Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie's friendship. You want to be Dr. Jackie's only best friend. And it's not lost on me that you kept driving the point home that Dr. Simone did this on purpose and how could she? Why would you do that to your best friend? Like, really, are you serious? I just said, stop, let this be between Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie, but we don't need you getting into this, making things worse. So Dr. Jackie even says in her confessional 
that she really thinks that Dr. Simone forgot and that Dr. Simone would never do something so malicious. So now Toya wants to know, will Curtis have an issue with this? And Dr. Jackie says, well, I don't know. I'll have to ask him. And I said, nobody gives a damn about how Curtis feels. He's the one who committed adultery. So I don't really give a damn how he feels about anything. It's all about how Dr. Jackie feels. Because honestly, truth be told, if I were Dr. Jackie, I would have said shout out to everybody, I have fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> shout out to everybody, I have fun. I gotta be good. <laughs> because Curtis cheating on anybody, that pissed me off right there because how dare you? The audacity. It's crazy to me how a man can look like a thumb and he'll still have the nerve to cheat. <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> you should be so happy that you're married and that somebody wanted you and you have the nerve to cheat? Like, sir, what? So now we jump right on over to Dr. Jackie at home. And of course, she's talking to Curtis. Now, a quick side note. Does anybody want to know what exactly is Curtis doing in the Dominican Republic? Because I'm sorry, I'm just not buying this whole thing about he's there for work. It's just, I don't know, I have too many questions. I really do. And I really feel like Dr. Jackie should have divorced him when this all came out. I don't know why they all pushed her to save the marriage. Like this is a group of women. A lot of them are pick me's and they feel like having a man is better than no man at all. So if that means putting up with cheating or any other stupidity, they'll do it just to say that I have a man because for a lot of them, especially Toya, they feel like being single is just the worst thing in the world. That's why it's so painful watching Robin Dixon on Potomac to see her really crash out over this man who is letting her know with his actions that he does not like her. It's shameful. But again, let me not go off on a whole rant about that because <laughs> we'll be here all day. So Dr. Jackie brings up the couple's trip to Hilton Head Island. And the way Curtis was so stunned, he was like, what? We've been down that road many times before. And I said, sir, don't get defensive. You're the one who stepped out on your wife. So why are you getting upset? I just said, again, the audacity, the unmitigated gall for Curtis to be upset when he's the one who did his wife wrong. And it was even funnier watching him squirm, talking about, well, our business is our business and I don't want anybody else bringing anything up. The focus is not on us and we're in a good place. I said, again, had you not cheated on Jackie, you wouldn't even be in this boat where you're getting upset. I just said, Curtis, you need to be asking Jackie how she feels. Don't make it about yourself. That was just so crazy to me how he's making it like he's the victim. So Dr. Jackie says, look, I hear you. I'm not trying to go back to a place that sets us back, but I do want to go to celebrate us going on trips for 10 years as a group. And I get that because I've always felt like Married to Medicine goes on cute trips. They always have fun for the most part when there's not a whole bunch of drama. But I understand her wanting to go because who doesn't want to go on a nice free five-star vacation, right? So now she goes on to ask Curtis if he's up for it. And then Curtis is talking about, oh, well, we'll see. I don't know. I said, Curtis, if Dr. Jackie wants you to go, you need to pack your bags and go and join her. Again, Curtis, you're the one who stepped out, not the other way around. So how dare you act like you're a victim in all this? If anybody is the victim, it's your wife, Dr. Jackie, not you. Now it's the day of Phaedra's son's 13th birthday. And when I tell you, Phaedra, you did that. Phaedra spared no expense on this party. That backyard was beautifully decorated. You had dancers, you had a food truck, a full bar for the adults. There was a photo booth, a step and repeat. I said again, that was $70,000 well spent. And Phaedra had everybody impressed. They all walked into the party. They were like, Phaedra did that. Like, okay, like, all right, girl, we see you. Now the way I fell out when Dwight came on the scene, Dwight is still friends with Phaedra and he comes out to announce Aiden. Now I have to say, 
I really do miss Dwight. He was such a pleasure. Anytime he would pop up in the earlier seasons of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, it was always a key. I low-key would not mind if Dwight got his own little series. I know that he owns hair salons in Atlanta. I think it's called the Purple Door Salon, but I wouldn't mind getting a show with Dwight and his hair salons and his day-to-day. -day. Like, I would love it. Dwight was funny, he was quick, he was witty, and he was made for TV. So I just say, yes, I was here for that Dwight cameo. <laughs> now, Toya, you have a bad habit when it comes to not minding your own business because instead of enjoying the party, why are you asking about Apollo? For you to say, oh, well, I thought that she would have Apollo there because they are her kid's father. Again, you don't know the ins and the outs of her relationship, so just stop. It's none of your business. It's none of your concern. Leave it alone. So while the birthday party is going on, we now see Phaedra, Toya, Dr. Heavenly, and Dr. Simone talking about the couple's trip. And right out the gate, you have Dr. Heavenly trying to stir up mess. So she's like, Dr. Simone, what made you choose Hilton Head? Because I'm thinking about Jackie and her feelings and we can easily change the location. And I will say that I do agree with Heavenly on that one thing about we can go somewhere else. That's not a hard thing to do. Even if we have to pay for the trip ourselves, we all have the money, but yeah, we can go somewhere else besides Hilton Head. And I have to admit that I was a bit surprised that Dr. Simone did pick Hilton Head because they usually have their cast trips in the Caribbean. So I am surprised that they did pick Hilton Head. And no shade to Hilton Head. Hilton Head is lovely. But I am surprised that they didn't go to the Caribbean. You know, I don't know. But anyhow, Dr. Heavenly keeps pressing Dr. Simone. And now Dr. Simone is getting pissed. She's not liking how Heavenly is trying to make it seem as if she's doing Jackie wrong because that's not her intention. But Dr. Simone, are you surprised? Because Heavenly has always been envious of your friendship with Jackie. And I hope you see that she's trying to put a wedge in between you guys. I'm not gonna hold you guys. I low key got teary eyed when it was time for them to cut the cake and Aiden got up and gave that speech to Phaedra saying that he could never repay her for all that she's done for him and his brother, how he loves her so much. And when they played the montage of when he was born to now, I got really teary eyed. I said, that was beautiful because we all remember watching your mom when she joined the show in season three, that was, that was 13 years ago. But I say all that to say the scene was very touching and it's nice to see Phaedra be vulnerable. We don't usually see that soft side from her. And to see her, you know, she was crying and she said, you know, I love you, you're my rock. And saying that her and her kids are friends. And I love to hear that. I think it's great that her kids are really thriving despite what they've gone through, seeing their dad going to jail and all that confusion, all that chaos. I'm glad to see that they're doing well. So Dr. Jackie arrives and you already know that Dr. Heavenly is not about to let this trip go. So now is Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie all talking. And I just said, do we have to do this at a child's birthday party? There's a time and a place for everything. And this just is not the moment to try to have this show down. So Dr. Simone starts it off and she's asking Jackie, if Jackie is still good with going to South Carolina. Now, before Dr. Jackie can even speak, you have Dr. Heavenly interrupting. And it would be at this moment where I told Dr. Heavenly, sis, I'm not about to play with you. Either shut up or leave because I'm not about to be going back and forth with you at a child's birthday party. Also, it's evident that you wanna come in between me and my good friend. And Dr. Jackie low key likes this stuff with them fighting over her because if I were Dr. Jackie, I would have told Dr. Heavenly to pipe down and just stop. And Dr. Jackie has gotten away with a lot of her mess because she's so quiet and so polished and so measured. But Dr. Jackie is just as messy, just as petty as they all are, but she just hides it a bit better. But I just said, girl, you like them fighting over you like this, don't you? 
and you love the fact that Dr. Heavenly will do anything to be your best friend. So Dr. Jackie reveals that Curtis does not want to go and now you have Dr. Heavenly jumping in again. So she's like, Simone, do you think that that was a good idea? And it's like, Dr. Heavenly, just be quiet. So Dr. Simone owns it that she messed up and now you have Dr. Heavenly stepping in again and she's like, thank you for that. I just said, oh my gosh, can you please let Dr. Jackie talk? It was so annoying watching Dr. Heavenly try and be Dr. Jackie's mouthpiece. So now Dr. Simone says, look, I'm gonna need your bulldog, referring to Heavenly, to be quiet. So of course, Heavenly and Simone get into it. You have all the other guests staring and the way I had secondhand embarrassment because you guys are showing your asses at a child's birthday party. And I was shocked that Phaedra did not escort them out of her home because one thing about me, I don't play that. You will not act a fool in my home. I will kick you out so fast and I don't even have children yet, but I can assure you that I would kick you out immediately if you came and showed your behind at my child's birthday that I spent 70 grand on. We would have a real problem. And Dr. Jackie, I thought it was really messed up of you to walk away while they were arguing. I was shocked that you didn't say, guys, we're at a kid's birthday party, not now, not here. You let them argue like that and you just walked away. I said, okay, girl, like I said, Dr. Jackie likes the mess and she's just as messy as all of them. She just hides it a bit better. Now, I don't give Toya too much, but I can always acknowledge when somebody is right. Toya clocked it when she said that Heavenly is in competition with Simone when it comes to Jackie's friendship. And I said, exactly. That's the real issue. And I also loved when she added that she would love to hear Jackie voice her opinion. And I said, Toya, we are all waiting for that because Jackie being quiet and walking away, it's getting tired. So now Dr. Jackie walks back over to where Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Simone are and they resolve their issues. I said, thank God, because you guys showing out like that at a child's birthday party, that's unacceptable. I don't care how you try and slice it. So now we end the episode with everybody packing for their trip and we see Sweet Tea talking about she's not that excited for this trip because they're just so much older than she is. Now, Sweet Tea, let me just break this down for you. You married a man who is almost 60. So I don't know why you're expecting him to have all these young friends. But we see 24 hours later, they are in Hilton Head and it is a hot mess. It's drama. Everybody's going at it. You have, I think, Dr. Simone versus Dr. Heavenly. Then we see Sweet Tea going at it with Dr. Jackie. I said, oh damn, okay. And Sweet Tea and Dr. Jackie are both activated. So I said, it looks like next episode is actually going to give what the other girls are supposed to have gave in the words of Rolling Ray. So I am here for it. I will be seated. But y'all, that was my recap. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you all later. Bye.